generation. How much longer must I be with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the boy was cured instantly. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? Jesus said to them, Because of your little faith. For truly, I tell you, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I would contend that we are confronted this morning by what I would call strong pieces of scripture. <clears throat> Messages that are direct, that don't mess around. Messages that come with strength because they're not caught up in intermediaries or background noise or competing loyalties. The word of God is clear. The one bringing the message makes a strong case. The recipient has ears that hear God's work of healing and creating a new world of peace and justice can be done. It's a wonderful selection of scripture for this missionary. Things seldom feel that clear in my life. I sometimes feel I would be standing there with the disciples we hear about in the gospel this morning. Jesus saying to me lovingly, mind you, but exasperated. Linda, where is your sense of God? Where is your focus? But I do believe in the universal Christ, the risen one, who yearns for the unity of humankind. Not only do I believe, but I have seen him. I have seen him and heard him in languages I cannot understand at all, in places far from here, as well as in these very pews, these beloved, familiar, local, Dude, it is the focus of faith and the gift of languages of William Carey, whom we commemorate this morning, who spread the gospel so broadly, who changed so many lives, who never lost his focus on doing the work of God that he had been called to do. In the beginning of the 19th century, there was an expansion of the Protestant missionary movement. No longer was, was it purely clerics sent uh, from the Roman church, obviously, in the very beginning, all over the world, but an interest in the Protestant churches in doing the same. William Carey was born in England in 1761, a son of the Church of England, and he was one of those men whose life was taken over by a spirit of the non-conforming churches, in this case through a fellow cobbler, because cobbling was William's trade. William went on to become a local pastor, and at the same time a village school teacher, and still, to pay the bills, a cobbler. A man with, you might say, so much to do, how could he nourish this faith and become such an astounding witness for Christ? Though his own formal schooling 
was brief, he kept on with his language studies, mastering many, I mean many. Uh, by the time he was in India, he was translating the Bible into five, six, seven languages and dialects. He had already mastered uh, three or four by the time he left England. His religious enthusiasm and this gift of languages led him to be one of the founders of the Baptist Missionary Society. And in 1793, leaving his first wife and younger children behind, he took his oldest son with him, a young teenager, and with other missionaries set off for India in 1793. He served in a few places and eventually landed up in, in uh, ended up in a, what was then a colony of Denmark called um, Sarampur, which is now in the state of Bengal and in India. And in 1818, he and some other missionaries founded a college, Sarampur College, um, for the purpose of training indigenous ministers. And what made it what I would call uh, reflective of the gospel was that regardless of the strong caste system in India, a person of any caste or any national origin was able to be admitted to the college. It's the second oldest college with, with university status in India. At the time, Sarampur, as I said, was a Danish colony, but it is now still alive and granting degrees in theology and connected to a number of schools so that people who live are born and live in India. The indigenous ministers he was hoping to encourage are still being granted degrees. And that was an astounding uh, finding for me to make um, for two reasons. Uh, one is, you know, that doesn't always happen. Um, yeah, events in countries, um, difficulties in missionary work, uh, times that they lose their focus <laughs> with uh, either in internecine, I should try to use the same word <laughs> in the morning, <laughs> fights between different kinds of interpretation of the word of Christ. Uh, all these things can eat away at a fragile and beginning school, right? We can see that ourselves. Um, but this place has survived and is still granting me read. And I was also struck by the fact that I think a fellow I did pastoral care work with at the University of Chicago Hospitals appears to be the president of the board of this college right now. I think I best try to make contact with him. Uh, altogether, what this missionary in concert with others was able to do is most extraordinary. And I think it's directly tied to these strong messages of scripture that we heard. Um, the word of God came to Jeremiah. And when he tried to step back, not thinking he was fit to do the work, God said, do not say I am only a boy. Do not say, I am only a girl, for you shall go to all whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. And to hold fast to that, and have faith in that, and to share that, is a remarkable focus that is called upon from us now, as well as so very very long ago. And surely William 
took uh, very seriously Paul's words to the church in Rome, in Rome that uh, Tom read this morning. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? Well, this missionary made sure that the people heard of the work, the healing, the saving work of Christ. So faith comes from what is heard. And what is heard comes through the word of Christ. And his translations of the Bible, I'll bet you, are still available there. And uh, several years ago when I was in Myanmar, I came across a translation of the Bible by an equally dedicated missionary in that area. And this translation still bore this man's name. And I thought, what a lasting, saving, uh, gospel increasing piece of work these people did, who were such uh, such translators and so focused on their work. And as I said when I began, I wonder, how do they keep this focus? How do I keep mine? How do you keep your focus? So that you too can speak the word of God wherever you are. When Jesus took his disciples aside, the distracted fellows who were feeling badly that they could not cast this demon out of the young man with epilepsy, Jesus said, when, when they asked, why couldn't we do this? Because you're not yet taking God seriously, said Jesus. The simple truth is that if you had a mere kernel of faith, a poppy seed, say, for those of us who bake, that's a little more familiar than a mustard seed, about the same size, the tiny things that fall off the counter and roll around on your floor. If you had faith as small as one of those, and you can nurture it, you can move mountains. The kingdom can be advanced, and that indeed is our work. There is nothing then that you can't tackle, but you must recall what Jeremiah said and what God said in response. I will be with you. I'll tell you what to say. You are mine. And that that relationship is the primary relationship in our lives. We can move mountains too, whatever they look like today. Amen. Prayers of the people will use form three on page 387. 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. 
Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered Give to the departed eternal rest. Let the light of perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May they also come to share in your heaven. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <clears throat> Most merciful God. God. We, we confess that we have sinned against you, God, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may be delighted in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Go ahead, unmute. Uh, peace be with you. Peace to you, Christelle, Alice. Peace to you as well. Peace to you. Peace. Good turnout in church. Yes. Okay, mute again. There is much happening that we can walk in love, my friends, as Christ's love does and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. <clears throat>
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, for the wonderful grace and virtue declared in all your saints, who have been the chosen vessels of your grace and the lights of the world in their generation. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, and in your prayer, holy Lord, O Son of our hearts, blessed is he who comes to the name of the Lord, O Son of our hearts. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ is God. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit. To be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The is the kingdom.
Alleluia, Christ our Passover and sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Before we pray together in the Thanksgiving <clears throat> for the Eucharist we have received, I wish to offer a prayer for the mission of the church in the spirit of the missionary William Carey 
and all others who bring the gospel all over the world. Almighty O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth. You sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray together and thank you. Eternal God, heaven and God. Blessings, God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and in all your wanderings wherever they may be. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks. Thanks.